Hey everybody, it's Alder Brown Art here, back with another video, and in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about running your very own art vendor booth. I'll tell you what you need to know about getting a booth, and I'm going to talk to you about supplies that you might need in order to run your very first artist vendor table. Keep in mind, you might have different needs if you're doing an art festival or a convention. For example, art festivals tend to be outside and you might need a shaded tent, but a convention wouldn't need that. You just have to keep in mind that the environment greatly affects the supplies you might need. I plan on doing conventions in 2023, but my very first art booth was at a local festival. Not everyone can do both though. Typically, if you're an anime artist, you might want to stick to just conventions. Meanwhile, a realism painter might want to do festivals. The customer base greatly changes with the different types of events, and you might want to keep your audience in mind. You have to ask yourself, who wants to buy my art? How do you find a place to run a booth? Typically, art festivals and conventions are advertised on places like Facebook. You can also ask your chamber of commerce. I would look up your city's website because they tend to have a calendar of upcoming events. For conventions, you can find either their Facebook page, their Twitter, or Instagram website, or you can go to places like animecons.com to find conventions going on in your state. Also, if I keep looking over here, I have my notes. How much does it cost to run a booth? It really depends. For my local festival, I had to pay something like 50 or $70, I think, but it varies. There can also be added fees, like if you need extra space or electricity. Festivals tend to be a bit cheaper, but that's because they're often outdoors and don't normally provide the tables. Conventions can cost anywhere from $100 to even 1000 if you're going to like a crazy large one, like the one in San Diego. It depends on the size of the convention. However, if you do this, it normally includes two admission badges, and that's for you and a friend to help run the booth. Be sure to get your taxes figured out as well. Local festivals might provide you extra forms, but conventions normally won't. If you don't know how to do your own taxes, let me help you. Get an accountant. Let's get into supplies. I'll be leaving links to all the products I mentioned in this video down below. This video is not sponsored, but some of the links might be affiliated, meaning at no extra cost to you, I earn a small commission to help support the channel. So if you do use those links, thank you for supporting the channel. First and foremost, obviously you will need a table and chairs. Some events and conventions supply these for you, but I went ahead and bought some anyway because my local festival doesn't already provide them. Make sure when you sign up, you check if you have to bring them yourself or not. Also, be sure to check if your booth allows you to have a second person so someone can manage and protect your table when you run to the bathroom. If it's an outdoor event, look into getting like a pop-up canopy tent. It'll be a lifesaver, especially in the summer heat. Also, try to bring a cooler because you probably don't want to pay those festival and convention prices or wait in those long lines. You're going to be there for hours. You're going to get hungry. Just bring a tablecloth just because it makes your table look that much more professional. I don't mean one of those cheap little plastic Dollar Tree ones. If you're making any investment in cheap booth at all, I think the best and most important thing to buy would be a front table banner with your name on it. Also bring any ropes, scissors, or tape you might need in order to hold it up and secure it. Do not underestimate how much or how strong of tape you're gonna need if you're gonna be outdoors. The wind is just so unpredictable and even if it says it's going to be completely clear out, you're gonna have things flying off your table. If you're running a business, you probably already know that you'll need business cards, but I recommend getting a nice business card holder as well. Also put up a sign saying to take one. For some reason, people are afraid to, and they always ask permission. If you're selling art prints, make sure to bring some kind of accordion folder or other storage to keep them so that way they don't get damaged. And also if you're selling art prints, you probably wanna get those like little plastic sleeves to keep them in. You're also going to want to bring either a money safe or an apron with pockets to keep all of the money on you if you're accepting cash. However, I would bring the apron and a safe because it's not good to carry large amounts of cash on you in case you get robbed or somebody picks your pocket, you know. I recommend getting a square reader because you can get one for free on their site and you don't even have to pay shipping and it'll allow you to take card payments. How they make money is just every single time you swipe a card, they take a small percentage of like a fee, basically. I think it's like, 25 cents or some, something cheap like that. But it's totally worth getting a square reader because then you can accept so many more forms of payment. And most people tend to have a card on them, but they don't always bring cash to a festival because they don't think about it. So now you have your main table set up, but now the goal is to catch people's attention. Everything else I'm going to go over is absolutely optional, but some may consider it a necessity. You're going to want to have some kind of display for your product. Most commonly used are those little grid cubes that you can get off Amazon or a photo backdrop stand that you can like chain tape your prints together to hold them up in the air behind you. If you go with the photo backdrop stand idea, I really recommend getting one with flat 
feet instead of the tripod one because I've heard from other people that when you're getting in a smaller space it can be a bit of a tripping hazard. You'll need to bring some kind of masking tape to hang the prints on together because masking tape is a little bit less rough and is less likely to rip your prints but if you are going to be taping your prints together make sure they're inside of sleeves. If you go with the grid cube idea you'll need to bring some kind of binder clips or like little clothes pins to clip your prints onto the grid cubes. I highly recommend putting some kind of stick on top of the sleeve or sticking a piece of paper in there with the price on it because some people don't bother to read the gigantic price sign so if you have it on the actual print they'll know exactly how much they're paying and that way they don't have to ask you and they'll feel more interested in buying it. You have to remember some people are too socially awkward to ask questions. You can get clear flyer displays to hold up signs for your booth. I highly recommend having not only a prices list but also an accepted payment sign. Also, a nice addition is a social media sign with a QR code. Remember, going to an event like this is basically a gigantic community outreach for your business. You want to have as much advertising as possible, and the more followers, the more customers. Some people like to get a portfolio binder to like leave on the table so customers can like flip through your prints. I recommend getting a personalized t-shirt or outfit. After all, if you're an artist, you are the business. Bring attention to yourself so people can notice you from afar. An outfit is a great way to bring attention without being obnoxious about it. You can also look into doing other table decorations like candles, plants, fairy lights, and more. Anything to make your table pop out a little bit more from the crowd. It may be worth it to invest into something cheap like stickers of your logo to give away for free. It got way more attention to my booth and it gave me a couple extra subscribers. If you don't know what to sell, you can try doing original artworks or prints. Bookmarks, postcards, stickers, and custom artist trading cards are nice paper products to try as well. If you're looking into getting into merch, t-shirts are typically the first thing to try, but you can also do hats, bags, jackets, and more. A lot of people sell mugs and to-go cups. Something really cheap you could try doing is just like little keychain to just take your artwork and laminate it and then stick it on a keychain. Look up Cricut ideas online. At conventions, you'll see bunches of artists selling buttons and pins. Having a wide variety of products can be a good thing, but don't stress yourself out about having absolutely everything imaginable, especially if it's your first booth. Just having a couple artworks available is fine. Besides, you don't want to make too big of an investment up front. The ideal amount of products to have is different depending on what size of convention or festival you're going to. Personally, I would have at least five products to sell. And I don't necessarily mean five products as in prints, bookmarks, and stuff. I mean five different types of art prints. Just please remember to bring emergency supplies. Tape, scissors, hot glue, rope, fishing lines, sewing kit, etc. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. If you're outdoors, make sure you wear socks and shoes in case of ants and bring a jacket in case it gets cold. It can be a long walk from the car to the parking lot to carry all of your things. Perhaps bring a cart. Also, you're probably going to become friends with the tables next to you, considering you're going to be stuck next to them for hours and possibly the next few days. Bring candy or something as a peace offering. Well, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and hit that subscribe button and comment down below if you have any other video requests. And I want to thank you so much for watching. I will see you all later. Nine Cat away.